A strange dark cloud appeared at the end of the sky, and within it electricity flashed and thunder roared, as if a terrible storm was brewing. In the blink of an eye, the cloud approached. A drop of rain fell, and the tree branches emitted a bizarre sizzling sound. This is the latest 2024 French disaster movie, Acid Rain Etching. Let's take a few minutes today to investigate what kind of rain can corrode steel cables thicker than skin. Flashback to two days ago, in a small town in northwest France, Selma and her friend were riding horses in the forest. Her friend entered the forest first, and just as Selma was about to mount her horse, she heard a scream from the forest. She saw her friend's horse running back in panic, strange white smoke emanating from its body, and her friend was nowhere to be seen. Before Selma could figure out what was happening, thunder rumbled from the distant sky, and a massive black cloud appeared at the horizon. The cloud quickly moved towards Selma, and as a breeze blew by, she smelled a strange acidic stench. Before she could understand what was happening, a few drops of rain fell, and the surrounding forest instantly emitted white smoke. Recalling the horse earlier, Selma immediately realized something was wrong and ran off in a panic, looking for shelter. Meanwhile, her father at home heard the news alert about a terrifying acid rain due to increased acidic substances in the atmosphere caused by pollution. Authorities urged everyone to seek shelter and avoid going outside. Her father, Michael, immediately thought of his daughter who was out riding. Just as he was about to go look for her, he saw Selma and the horse running back. They quickly hid in the stable, with the acid rain following closely behind. Michael thought the stable could hold up, but after a short while, sizzling sounds came from the roof. Looking up, Michael saw the old stable was being corroded. As Michael and Selma were at a loss, his ex-wife Elise drove up. Father and daughter covered themselves with plastic sheets and quickly got in the car. The radio was broadcasting reminders to citizens to seek shelter and avoid contact with the rain. The pH of rain acidity has exceeded 0, 1, which means that what is falling from the sky at this moment is not rain, but sulfuric acid. Luckily, the rain didn't last long and stopped after a few minutes. The family hurriedly drove towards the city, aiming for a shelter. However, the road was packed with cars, creating a massive traffic jam. A traffic cop was directing cars at the intersection, and as he cleared a few, the acid rain started again. Caught off guard, the cop was burned by the acid rain. Hearing the sizzling on the car roof, Elise decided they couldn't stay. She drove onto the lawn beside the road. They had just broken out of the lawn when Selma realized that the roof of the car was corroded. Fortunately, the rain didn't last long and the family safely reached a nearby town. The town was in shambles, with many people lying in the streets, people whose skin had been so badly burned that they had long since lost their breath. Elise drove to a mall, and they gathered clothes to cover the car roof. During this time, Elise called her boyfriend Bryce, asking him to join them in evacuating. Bryce mentioned a relative's underground shelter that was very sturdy, suggesting they could all take refuge there. Elise sighed in relief upon hearing this. They agreed to meet at the next town. After securing the car, the family set off again. However, midway through their journey, disaster struck again. The prolonged exposure to the rain had rendered the car's wheels unusable. They had to abandon the car and proceed on foot. After walking for several hours, they found a restaurant. With nightfall approaching, Michael decided they should rest there. Exhausted, they searched the restaurant for food. In the kitchen, Michael found a faucet and turned it on to check if the water was contaminated. Unable to tell by sight alone, a small cat approached. Michael caught some water in a container, intending to test it on the cat. But Selma stopped him, deeming it cruel, uncertain about the water's safety. They didn't drink it. Fortunately, they found some canned food and cake in the storage, which provided water to quench their thirst. After a simple meal, they prepared to rest. Selma thought of the cat and brought some food for it. Only to find it dead in the kitchen, Michael's suspicion was confirmed the water was contaminated. The next morning, the family took some food and continued towards the next town. Along the way, they encountered other refugees. After hours of walking through the wilderness, the group arrived at a large bridge. Due to acid rain corrosion, many support structures of the bridge were damaged. To ensure safety, police officers blocked the bridge, allowing only the first group to pass before the next could go. In the crowd, Elise and Selma got separated. Elise wanted to wait for the next group but was pushed forward by the crowd. She had no choice but to cross the bridge with this group. Halfway across, the bridge began to creak, and Elise saw the main support beam collapsing. She tried to run back, but it was too late. The collapsing beam broke the bridge surface, and in the chaos, 
Elise and a few others fell off. The river below was filled with acid water, equivalent to falling into sulfuric acid. At the bridgehead, Selma and Michael saw Elise fall and rushed to the riverbank to rescue her, but she was too far away to save. They could only watch helplessly as Elise was corroded by the acid water. Because the road across the river was cut off due to bridge damage, the military took the survivors and moved them to a factory where they replenished some water and food. Michael tried to contact Bryce to ask about the shelter, but his phone was off. Michael suspected Bryce was also facing an emergency. Then Michael called his girlfriend, who was trapped in a hospital. The concrete roof could hold for a while. At that moment, the military found a new escape route. Michael hurriedly found Selma, intending to leave with the group. However, Selma insisted on finding Bryce, but Michael had no idea where to look. Eventually, Michael persuaded Selma, and they followed the group to a forest. The new shelter was deep in the forest, and they needed to cross a mountain to prevent getting lost. Soldiers lit smoke bombs along the way. Just as the group set off, a black cloud appeared in the sky, followed by a thunderclap and another acid rain. In the chaos, Michael found a dilapidated building and quickly took Selma inside. They had just entered when the acid rain poured down. After a while, the rain stopped, and they hurriedly left the cave. Heading forward, unexpectedly, they went the wrong way. The shelter was behind them, and they ended up in a village after crossing a wasteland. Exhausted and hungry, Michael searched for food, but the villagers had already evacuated, leaving the village deserted. At that moment, Selma saw a figure in the distance. The woman brought the father and daughter to her house. The woman's name is Deborah. She is a single mother with a son suffering from severe kidney disease, requiring daily dialysis. Deborah is hesitant to leave because she worries that the shelter won't have the necessary equipment. However, Selma notices that the walls of the house are covered in corrosion marks, indicating that the house might not hold out for much longer. Deborah realizes this too, but she's not in a rush because she has a basement. After dinner, Michael helps Deborah move the equipment to the basement. Deborah tells them there's a car in the garage that they can use if they need to leave. After careful consideration, Michael decides to drive to the city, where there is a shelter and better infrastructure, but Selma disagrees. She still wants to find Bryce. The father and daughter argue and have a falling out. With no resolution, Michael decides to rest and make a decision the next day. Just as they fall asleep, the acid rain strikes again. Michael initially believes Deborah's house can withstand it, but he underestimates the acid rain's power. Contaminated acid water seeps into the house through the pipes, corroding them. Sleepy Michael hears a niggling sound. He opens his eyes to find rainwater seeping into the room through the cracks. Michael quickly wakes his daughter and then goes to knock on Deborah's door to warn her that the house is collapsing. Deborah, afraid that Michael has ulterior motives, locks the basement door, unable to hear their shouts. At that moment, the roof begins to collapse. Looking at the corroded stairs, Michael tugged his daughter to the garage and drove away from the village. However, shortly after they leave, the car gets stuck in a mud pit. Selma blames Michael, insisting that if they had followed Bryce's route, they would have reached the shelter by now, and her mother wouldn't have fallen into the river. She blames her father for everything. <laughs> Michael, already frustrated, soon calms down. He steps outside the car to find a way to get it unstuck. Neither of them notices that a nearby pipe has leaked and the acid water is flowing toward them. Michael realizes it too late. Noticing his shoes starting to smoke, he rushes back to the car, intending to leave, but then realizes Selma is missing. Panicked, Michael searches and finds Selma stranded on a truck far away. Stuck and unable to move, Michael drives over, but the car is still stuck in the mud. Seeing the truck sinking, Michael, despite the pain, makes his way to Selma. <laughs> Seeing her father in pain, Selma realizes her mistake. She hurriedly dragged Michael into the car, but her father's feet were already badly eroded. Just as Selma despairs, a passing rescue team finds them. They are taken to the city's shelter. Due to severe corrosion, 
Michael's legs are amputated. This brings the story to an end. The above is the entire plot of the latest 2024 disaster movie. Acid Rain Etching, 